<laughs> Not a wait for victims. <laughs> Ah, it's a good flavor. Hello, Kyle, Timothy, Mike, and 3DRCNC. Who's been farting? Uh. Hello there, Rowan. Jerry Martin. Mm. I love the southern pecan flavored coffee, so I bought a hundred pack of just that flavor. <laughs> Southern Pecan Coffee by Crave, I think it is. Hang on, I'll show you. You're going to like the Viper. 150 bucks for a Viper is ridiculous. You are going to like the Viper. Very good. Where is the coffee? There it is. I don't care if it's pounds or dollars. That's a great fucking price. It's a it's a CR6 SE on steroids. <laughs> what changed with the YouTube dislike system? I thought they got rid of it. As far as the dragon, yeah. The dragon is coming along, and that's a scale reference. It's 280% scale. And I, I just have to finish the tail. I just printed the last full-size link. It's on the printer. And now I just have to print the tail sections. I have to finish scaling them. But yeah, he's coming. Oh, I lost one of the antlers. i got to print another antler. Uh, it's I can't find it for the life of me. <laughs> so I'm guessing Cat grabbed it. <laughs> it's small enough for them to be curious. I thought they I thought they did that a long time ago, got rid of the dislike counter. Eh, I'm indifferent. To me, interaction is interaction, whether they're clicking like or dislike, that means they watch the video, right? <laughs> Have you ever updated your Edge 3 profile? No. I've had no reason to update it. Um, but yeah, this is the coffee I'm drinking. That is my favorite flavor so far. Interesting. Um, have, um... 100 amp hours should be more than long enough to run through the night. Because that's, um, what, 1.3 kilowatts?
yeah, 1,280 kilowatts. And you're running 100 watts, so that's enough for 12 hours. That's barely enough for one night. Um, 200 amp hour would probably be better because you won't cycle beat your battery so bad. Um, but it's good that you're using lithium iron phosphate. How many watts of solar you got on there? Now the good news is you don't need that to run at all during the day. And are you, um, oh. okay, good. You don't run them all night, so you're not beating them so bad. You could probably dim them down a little bit and cut down on that wattage. How many watts of solar are you charging that with? Hundred watts of solar, so that means you'll get fifty watts. Um, wait a minute, you have them at one percent and they're consuming twenty watts. That doesn't make sense. Or do you mean they um their maximum is twenty watts and you're running it at one percent? Okay, so you're probably running well under 20 watts per 100 watts. Is it low? Um, I don't think anything's changed. It's using that microphone. I can bump it up a little bit. That'll make it a little bit louder. No, no, that's good because um, when you when you dim down LED bulbs, um, you get a double benefit. Um, number one, the dimmer you run an LED bolt, the higher your lumen per watt efficiency. So they actually get more efficient the dimmer you run them. On top of that, you're going to um, consume less power, of course. Um, and then on top of that, the... Um, um, oh... Oh, damn it. I can't think straight sometimes. You're going to be um, underutilizing all the electronics in those LEDs. Because, the, sadly, the problem with an LED bulb, cat was messing with something, is that um, usually the LED emitter is not what fails. Oh, no, 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 no. If you're, if you're running a 20-watt max lamp at 1%, it's probably not 1%. It's probably just 1% on the scale. But, um... Yeah, I, I'm getting a lot of messages that people are having difficulty accessing my Google Drive, and I don't know why. So let me try something. Printer profiles. Get link. Okay. Copy the link. Try this. That's an annoying um, link. What's the matter, Kitty? Yeah, I love how Bitly took away the ability to make custom links and then um, added it back under a paywall. Isn't that nice? Okay, create. Why can't I copy the whole thing? Dumbass piece of shit. There's a short link. I'll have to update my description link, because for some reason, 
I'm, I'm getting messages saying people are trying to access it and it's not letting them or something. And I'm like, what the hell? It's a public link. So that means I should be able to update the link in here. My printer profiles. Here we go. There. There, I updated the description link too. Maybe I just had to make a new link. Um, I tried the first version of this 3D scanner, and it was eh, didn't go so well. So I'm hoping V2 will go a lot better. Yeah, here's that coffee I'm drinking. I like their Vermont Maple and their um, Southern Pecan. They also have a variety pack you can get that um, comes with 10 different flavors. Um, my preference is the um, Vermont Maple and the Southern Pecan. The cinnamon is also good and the um, there's a blueberry one. Blueberry Vanilla, that one's also very good. Now, of course, this is a Kickstarter. As with all Kickstarters, you're an angel investor when you use a Kickstarter. So there's no guarantee you're going to get anything at all. You know, it could fail. Now, this is from an established company who's already released products. So 99.9% .9 chance you're going to get it. But it is a Kickstarter, so always be aware of that. Uh, yes, there should be. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, that's the trick. Hope it works well. Hell is it? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Looks like it was ten months. I believe that was the stream. I think. <laughs> Well, it's amazing. I scored some canned goods at Kroger's, um, at um, Smith's, we call them, and um, they had uh, four for two dollars, which is fifty cents a can. Normally, fifty cents a can is is my starting point. <laughs> Here in in New Mexico, fifty cents a can is about as good as it gets. <laughs> so I grabbed another ten bucks worth of green beans and um, um, I don't get the lag 2700 kilobits per second 8% CPU no drop frames audio is out of sync again maybe if I change audio source can I change audio source Uh, why would you do that? Is there no way to change audio without? Fixed. I didn't do anything. <laughs> so it must be a YouTube thing then.
because I changed nothing. I was going to try using a different microphone. I've got to find that USB card to get in here so I can plug in a, a separate microphone. So I grabbed green beans and corn. Sadly, it seems like there's only ever three vegetables on sale. French cut green beans, regular cut green beans, and corn. That's it. There's never any other veggies on sale. I can't get carrots or anything like that. You know, they're all very expensive. Which is annoying because I need carrots. I'm, I'm, only, I'm down to like 30 or 40 cans of carrots. But, um... I did manage to snag a couple of decent um, Black Friday cyber deals. And I'll show you. So I did splurge on one thing. I really, really wanted this Dutch oven. It was on sale for one forty nine. I got it for just under a hundred with my um, rewards points and my Amazon gift cards. And um, so I managed to get that for like ninety six dollars. That's gonna hurt a little bit, but I want that so bad. The um, um, I have a very large seven and a half quart Dutch oven like even at, at back in Pennsylvania with a full size oven you it actually made the rack bow when I filled it <laughs> but I don't have a full size oven here so this is a countertop Dutch oven that's actually a cast iron insert in there so I'll be able to do that kind of stuff again then got this um, it was actually a a three pack I think yeah, because it was cheaper than this. Yeah, I paid ten dollars and twenty cents for three of them, so I got ninety. Um, this be this better be what I ordered, cause I'm gonna be a little annoyed if it's not. Yeah, three. Okay. There it is, three. And, um, I gotta stop showing that. I'm an idiot. Well, anyway, um, that's actually cheaper than a dollar store. So, um, dollar store used to be six for a dollar, now it's four for a dollar. So, 25 cents each. Um, it just depends on the day. But, um, yeah, that was a good deal. Then I got the, um, 400 count Lipton Black Tea. And that was $9.35. I was like, hell yeah. And not a huge sale. But it's like 25% off. Because you see here, regular price, twelve seventeen. I got it for nine thirty five, So about 25% off. But um, um, I like the Lipton because it makes good generic iced tea. But also it's good for cutting tea. So for example, if you have some, you know, expensive tea, um, I tend to make... Um, Yes, three forty for thirty. I tend to make twenty four ounce teas, you know, big twenty four ounce glass. And so I use three tea bags. Well by using the Lipton tea I can cut my tea. So I can use two of the expensive tea bags and one of the Lipton tea. So I get the um, full saturation of tea without using as much of the expensive tea. So for example, you know, You know, some Twinnings Ultra Spice. You know, this stuff's pretty expensive. So I'll use two of these and one of the Lipton, and I'll get 90% of the flavor with uh, one-third less cost. Uh, well, no, I tend to buy um, more than a year's worth of food. So, um, you know, 30 cans isn't enough for a year. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of money. And so one of the ways that you don't pay full price is you buy it on sale. But that's not actually how you don't pay full price. The way you pay, never pay full price is that you have to buy enough to make it to the next sale. I'm trying to plant a garden. The problem is my climate is not optimal for gardening. <laughs> I do have 
um, four or five raised gardens and I have um, I have a small greenhouse and I have um, a trellis with a grazed garden and um, I have a um, bunch of that I got from Vince before I got booted from the program and uh, so I just gotta figure out where to get soil at a reasonable price because the, the soil in my yard is not really usable and um, um, I can't even do much composting because one of the primary ingredients of composting is greens and browns and the browns, um, the, the greens is leaves and grass clippings neither of which I have <laughs> I have no deciduous trees except for the one right there which doesn't really drop any leaves and I have no grass so I haven't even figured out how to compost in any kind of serious quantity yes I have two little mini greenhouses I still have to build them but that should allow me to dramatically extend my growing season so I can get seedlings going before frost is finished because of the greenhouse and um uh, I still have to build them, of course. I just got all of this over the last couple months. But yes, I am going to try to garden. I've got tons of seeds. Well, that's just it. Where I live, we don't have grass. <laughs> I, I live in the I live in the, the mountainous desert. The, the, there's no grass. <laughs> so, like the I don't I don't think there's anybody within thirty miles that has grass. Or at least any kind of substantial amount. And um, I also got this, which was a great deal. Um, hang on, I'll tell you how much. <laughs> I paid 15 bucks for six. So I got um, $15 and I got 6 of these. So that's $11 savings, almost. It was $10.43 savings because it was $15.40. Um, so that's a really good deal for 120 tea bags from Twinnings. I love chai and I love pumpkin spice, so that was perfect. And um, then we also got some Tazo. That came to $12.00. So for 12 bucks, I got 120 Classic Chai Tazo tea bags, which is another great deal. <laughs> it might be composted by the time it gets here. Um, then this was um, <coughs> this was on sale for, oh, how much was it on sale for? Because there was also a coupon code. <sighs> I'm switching screens to avoid plastering my address and credit card information all over the screen. Twelve dollars. So for twelve bucks, I got this um, Grizzly Claw Kicking Horse Coffee. It's regular price is twenty nine. So it was on sale for like eighteen ninety nine plus the twenty two percent coupon came to twelve dollars. I was like, okay, it's worth it. Let's try it. It's whole bean, two point two pounds, so it's a decent amount. Then I got this set of wrenches for eighteen bucks. It's um five point five to twenty seven millimeters, and they're real thin. So it's, a, it's good for squeezing into those thin, narrow places. So I thought that was worth having. Hey, Darren. But that's what I got from, you know, basically just food and Dutch oven and a set of wrenches. I couldn't afford to get much. But the food was a good deal. You know, that's a, with the, with the hot chocolate I have already on hand, that's a year's worth of hot chocolate, so I'm good. Which I'm real happy about. And, um... Yeah, thin wrenches, especially if they're decent, come in handy. I agree. And, um... But yeah, that worked out pretty good. I did a, um... A legal focus group. So I got 125 bucks for that. Hell yeah, actually I just got it today. I just initiated the transfer to a bank account, so... That's going to help out a lot. <laughs> well, more the address. I keep screwing up and showing my freaking address on the screen, and that's just dumb. But, um, any more interest in 3D printing here? It's a 3D printing channel, dude. Of course we're interested in 3D printing. 
but we don't get into it right away. We give people time to come in and, and join the stream. This was printed on the um, the longer 3D triple 4K printer. So that's a 25 megapixel. It's almost 8K. It's three quarters of the way to 8K um, resin printer, and it printed this. So I had to break the head into four pieces, two antlers and the two pieces for the head, but I was able to print everything else in one piece. Yeah, exactly. We just chit-chat until people get in here. So this is 280% scale, and it, this is only two-thirds of it. I still have to print the tail, but I have to individually modify all these pieces. So what I did is I modified the STL file. Let me show you. So I modified the STL file, and I got rid of the joint between the links, and I made my own pins. So now I can use this pin. Is this one not going to fit? Oh, that's not going to fit. This one needs to be trimmed. There we go. So I modified it to use these pins and these pins join the segments together. So I still need to, now this one here, what, what, I, what was nice is that all these links, um, all these links are identical. So the two links that have the feet are identical, just the feet themselves are different. And then these, in, yeah, it's a titanium, even the blade's titanium. That's like 50 bucks for that. Glad I didn't have to pay for it because <laughs> I couldn't afford it. <laughs> but that's really cool. I like that. Um, but all of these intermediary links are identical. So once I modified one, I was just able to print, 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 print. However, the tail, um, the tail of the dragon is actually the same exact link, but each one is scaled differently. Um, so I have to go through and modify every single one. No, I have not tried Clipper yet. Um, so once I'm finished modifying all the tail pieces, then I'll print those and I'll have the entire dragon. I'm also printing a 500% scale dragon. Here is the first five links. So this is being printed on my artillery hornet. And this is a 500% scale dragon. Same custom links to join them together. So that's going to be cool when that's done. That's going to take a while. And my ultimate goal is to print a 1670% scale dragon. I should be able to do that using the Chiron. I'll still have to break the head into multiple pieces, but I've already done that, so... Nice. You should be able to print about 16 or 1700% scale if you want. It'll only take you like two months to print it. Yes, I did that in Tinkercad. Actually, we did that, and you could see that on the live stream last week. We went through and made those links on Tinkercad. I'm actually going to be releasing a, a model file so that you can do this yourself. Um, basically, you cut and then merge, and then you've created your own custom link. What happened to Sanjay? Uh, I print at 220 on my Chiron, but I use a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. <laughs> And I'm actually going to be going to a 1.4 million nozzles. No, I did not hear that. Oh my god, that sucks. How old was he? Was it an accident or just... RNG? That actually sucks.
31 years old? Oh my god. Cat, if you're somewhere you're not supposed to be, I'm going to kick your ass. Oh my god. That really sucks, man. Jesus, 31. Anything less than 60 is just, holy shit. Wow. Man, that sucks. No, it doesn't. It had to... Well, if it was an accident, they probably would have said. So it must have been some underlying health issue that just... RNG. Sometimes shit happens. Damn it, that sucks. It reminds you of how mortal you are. Yeah. Not a good reminder. Alright, so what's in these boxes? No, you you don't usually don't need to at 32. Jesus. Oh nice wow, nice card. Oop, right there. when the companies do st stuff like that, you know, you know, a nice little card like that. I don't know if everybody's going to get that. That might just be for people who get the review unit, but still, that's pretty cool. A uh, t-shirt I can never wear. Wow, it's actually embroidered. It's actually an embroidered t-shirt, except that it's uh, extra large. <laughs> uh, I need about five times larger. <laughs> Sticky base, micro USB, and a tripod. There is the chance that um this stuff might not be included with a regular kit. I'm not sure. This is probably the regular kit. Dragon out of the way. Oh, this has a USB connection too. Well, that's interesting. This also has a USB connection, or it can be battery powered. So you can throw three AAA batteries in there, or you can plug it into USB. There is your guide pattern. 
so that it has a reference point to know what it, where it is and what it's looking at. Oh, there's a USB-C cable. USB-C to USB 3.0. This is USB A to USB 3.0. And then we have a C to A and a C to C. Nope, that's a C to micro. Thank you, Pygar. I appreciate that. We have uh, some extra dots. I'm guessing this is for laying out on the table. Is this sticky tack? Yeah, I think that's sticky tack. So you would use that to hold things in place. Um, blurry video. The video is not blurry. Which means, for whatever reason, your YouTube has probably dropped you down to 144p. So, uh, well, it's better than Mini A, but I'd prefer USB-C. Um, so, if you're getting blurry video, your YouTube probably switched you to 144p. Change it back to 720p. And don't pick auto. Actually, pick a resolution, and it'll stop attempting to switch you. Uh, sample. Scanning subject. guessing that's a phone mount that is a, a, a tripod head oh interesting okay so this takes the USB 3 and then gives you micro or C that's actually kind of cool so this will plug into micro USB C or USB 3.0 so that's actually kind of cool I'm okay with that. Especially because this screws on, which means you could put that on there permanently. So you see there's screw holes for that mount on there. So you can put that on there permanently. That's nice. I like that. Because that should be durable enough to um, not have to worry about breaking it since it screws into place. So that will fit on there. And then these screw into place. I wonder if this can work by phone app. That would actually be kind of cool if you can use your phone. A little hard to get these to screw in because you don't have much space here to finagle with them, but it does secure that in there, and that would be durable enough to prevent damage. So, not bad. Not bad at all. And then this is the tripod it comes with. I'm guessing that is extendable. Maybe not. Why have the post? Oh, for weight. Okay. That's actually an interesting design. So the center post will take the weight while this provides the stability. That's actually a kind of a cool design. And I'm um, hoping there's instructions. That's a warranty card. Uh, that's a problem. Well, scanners for now are going to be expensive. <laughs> Do it. Why not? But you you, you gotta you gotta build a channel. Where is the instructions? Like, what software do I even use? Okay.
Uh, no, the way this works is um, you have a tripod, and then as the weight pushes down, that center post touches, so the tripod can't collapse. That's actually a pretty good design. Uh, actually, from the time I started to the time I started actually earning income from the channel, and actually about the same time I got my first free review printer, was two and a half years. Yeah, it was two and a half years from the time I started the channel to the time I made my first dollar. And also, coincidentally, the time I got the first printer. Okay. Come on. Here we go, here's a manual. Although I, I'm assuming it's probably the same. Yeah, the Focus is actually, you're talking about the Focus, the Odin 5, the foldable printer. That's actually a pretty decent printer. Okay, this is definitely for the older scanner, but I'm going to wager a guess that the software hasn't changed. How the hell do I download this? Here we go. Oh, go ahead. I don't care. You know, as long as you're not posting affiliate links, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, just have people try to post affiliate links like, dude, this is my channel. <laughs> well, you want to plug videos and channels? Go for it. Okay, so there is an app called HandyScan. We can use this phone. It's got a Snapdragon processor. <laughs> well that's the problem when you start changing stuff you um run into issues of what's causing the problem the printer or what you changed so um, make sure the printer I always tell people don't upgrade printers leave them alone leave them stock get them working perfectly Get them running flawlessly to where you can walk up to the printer and click print and not have a problem and you understand how to make it work. Then do your updates little by little. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. It didn't come with any instructions. <laughs> Alrighty. Handy scan. I'm assuming the um the Stuff they send out will have instructions. Cool. Um, they no longer let you click on a user's icon to get to their channel. So post a link to your channel so people can find you. I have no idea why YouTube took that away. I used to be able to click on like your DWIT 3D logo icon. I used to be able to click that and go to your channel. They took that away for some reason. So post a link to your channel. There's no SD card. So 
So they have an Android app. We're going to download that. And then they also have a Windows app. We're going to download that. Well, oddly enough, scanning a 3D print is a good idea. Especially if you have something decently large, like for example, one of these sections of the dragon. The advantage of scanning a 3D print is that it's already relatively low resolution with facets. So you can actually bring the two STL files into a slicer together. And you can look at them and actually see where you lost something in the detail. That's actually a good idea. My objective ultimately is I want to scan nose cones. So these old custom nose cones, like cockpit nose cones, spaceship nose cones, stuff like that, from these old rocket kits that aren't made anymore, or that are um, too complex for me to model myself, and I want to scale them up to upsize the rocket or scale them down. So that's what I'm hoping to be able to do. So that is Dewitch channel. Make sure you check it out. He is finally over a thousand subscribers, which is awesome. So he can monetize now. Well, assuming I'm assuming you have four hundred thousand watch minutes. But being able to scan something that's known and bring it into a slicer and be able to zoom in and look at the two parts will give you a pretty good idea as to how good it actually is. But maybe we'll scan, I don't know, we'll figure something out. I'll grab some random thing here. Hey, Lightspeed. Okay, so we got the Reva Point app. Next, next, install. Let us see, we have a full size to 3.0 cable. Nice! Very good. Just don't forget your taxes. They will come for your blood. <laughs> I don't know how that works in Canada, but I imagine they have similar... Boy, getting access to these screws is really hard. But they do have a slot on the end, so you can use a screwdriver. There we go. So let's plug the USB 3.0 to standard cable in. Yes. I don't know how that works in Canada, though. Well, see, here's the thing. A lot of people think, oh, I just won't report that. It's too small an amount, right? Yeah. Well, that 1099 gets automatically sent to um, the IRS, at least here in the U.S. <laughs> so um, you can't um, just pretend it doesn't exist. That is a good way to get in trouble. Now, why does this... This has got a battery in it. What? You know something? I bet this is for mobile. I bet this is to provide power to the scanner. And, um... Um, so you don't drain your phone battery. Powering this directly from the phone. I bet you that's exactly what this is for. We're going to play with that. In fact, let me get this plugged in to make sure it's charged up. Yep, definitely need the charging. So, um, you don't have to pay taxes on YouTube income in Canada? Or they just take out a fixed tax amount regardless?
Oh, maybe I could finally scan my foot for welfare god. <laughs> it's similar here. We can um, write off. Okay, so in the U.S., um, you know, obviously we have, it's a little bit different. We have um, death of a thousand cuts here in the U.S., so you get taxed from many different angles. <laughs> yeah, I bet he will be. <laughs> um, the um, Although I probably have to use photogrammetry for my foot because I, I can't exactly rotate my foot on a platform. That wouldn't exactly work. I have to cut it off, and, and the, the reattachment part would be a little problematic. <laughs> so, um, we have um, four different federal income taxes. State income tax, local income tax, county income tax, city income tax. And then we also have utility taxes, and DMV taxes, and property taxes, and school taxes, and sales taxes, GERT. We have a lot of different taxes, so um, when you when you listen to the news and they say, well, this group only pays this much in taxes, that's mostly a lie. They're limiting themselves to only counting not only just federal income tax, but only one of the federal income taxes, not all four. So, for example, if I'm the, the 125 bucks that I made from that focus group, I'm going to have to pay 15.3 percent. Um, federal income tax for the three basic ones that's Medicare um, Social Security and matching tax and then I'm also gonna have to pay about nine and a half percent in um, federal income tax base so that's already about um, 24 and a half percent tax on the hundred and twenty five dollars then I also have to pay about four percent in state income tax on that so now we're at like 28 percent tax and then, of course, I have to amortize all the rest of my taxes onto my income. So I'll end up paying about 35% of my income in taxes. And, um, and uh, although I, that doesn't include deductions, which will help a lot. I <laughs> propose for Biden. <laughs> exactly. That's why um, I was able to get so much stuff from Vince. Because it's just a write-off for me. So it's, it's a net zero. I don't have to worry about the taxes. People who can't write it off, it's a big deal. You know, you order 10 grand worth of stuff and you got to pay 22% tax on that. That's a lot of money. But um, it's interesting because we call it federal income tax, but it's not income tax. Um, you see, businesses have the privilege of paying income tax. Citizens don't. Citizens are required to pay revenue tax. Um, I only pay tax on my profit, while a citizen has to pay tax on every penny they have. So, there's advantages to being a business. <laughs> Where's the Revo Point software? Handy scan. There we go. Handy scan, handy studio. Okay. It says camera's on. Okay, it sees something. Oh, it's seeing something. Would you look at that? I haven't even done anything yet, and it's already seeing the dragon head here. And there's my hand. Oh, wow! Would you look at that? It's already seeing stuff. Let me move my head over here. So let's get this set up. Okay, so it looks like the micro is basically just for this little base. Let's get a little battery box set up. Oh, 
there's our little battery box. Now, this is 3D printed? That don't look 3D printed. It says this is 3D printed, but that does not look 3D printed to me. Oh wow, that's working the CPU a little bit. It's definitely working my CPU because it's spitting up. What we want to do is get all the extraneous stuff out of the way so we're not picking up random bits. And we're picking up a little bit of the cable there. Okay, that actually looks pretty decent already. Yeah, I didn't I didn't do anything yet. <laughs> Let me put me down here. Let me check out the manual real quick. Make sure I'm not missing a step. Quick start guide. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the file has a download link. Cables. Yeah, the first one definitely did not work this well. But this worked right out of the box. Yeah, the plastic sheet, I assume, is for the table. But I'm getting lucky so far. It's not detecting too much on the table. And it says, refer to the user manual for detailed settings, which I can't really do yet. You know, son, let's just YOLO. Let's change that to auto and auto calibration. You probably angle this down just a bit more. How do I go to scan? says excellent open so I click new we're gonna scan by I'm assuming marker means the little markers on the bed there so I'm assuming I need to be far enough back for it to see all those markers And we're going to do no color. Yep, it's seeing the markers. Okay, the button is now available to me. I'm assuming I have to press the... Holy crap, I think it's working. Do I let it go two rotations or do I let it go one or Looks like it's not getting the top of the head though.
Let's stop it. Complete. It's doing something. Uh, it's a review item. They asked me if I wanted to do a review of it. And I said yes. Yeah, that, that's the whole point of these new scanners is that they automate a lot of it, theoretically. What I'm surprised is that they don't... All right, audio should be back. We're going to have to do that every now and then. Restart in order to get the audio back. I don't know why. It's <laughs> it's OBS. It actually is OBS because it shows me audio. Like when you guys say I'm muted, it shows me the audio is working in OBS and Windows says the audio is working. But um um, I have to close OBS and reopen OBS. I don't know why. Okay, fusing complete. Now what do I do? There is a download button here. Let's call it test. Now I'm assuming at this point I open up studio. And there's test. Yep, there we go. So there's the cloud point model. Yeah, it didn't get to the top of the head. So I was a little too close. Also, I got a minimum number of points on the bottom here, you can see. So it had some difficulty with that. But still, that's kind of cool. So we want to fill holes. Mesh. I guess I'm going to create a mesh. The sound is gone again? Okay, so that was just your end. Okay. But see, it doesn't usually happen that quick. Okay, there it goes. It created a mesh. It's definitely not as smooth as the original. I can tell just by looking at it. So let's fill the holes. Okay, there we go. We close the top of the head. We close the bottom. It closed out the side there. Now I should be able to export this as a STL file. STL, there it is. Let's call it test. Save. Okay. Uh, where would that be? Probably under program files, handy scan. surface on the bottom there we go there you go not as clean as the original because that is the original and you can see the original is pretty smooth but still that's a a fairly decent replication of that
and I just plugged it in and clicked go. <laughs> Let's try something else. Now I'm having fun. Okay, so let's go to new marker, no color, confirm. Okay, it's seeing the markers. What can we scan? That is, oh, that'll stand up. Okay. We're going to get closer for this one. Let's bring this closer. Okay. It's kind of annoying to hit the button under here. Uh, this one might actually have trouble. Yep, it's losing it. Why the hell is it making that noise? What the hell? Don't do that. Um, no, it's, I think it's because it's metallic. This is a metallic object. So it's going to reflect the um, depth sensing signal it's sending out. So usually with something like this, you'd have to um, put like talcum powder on it. So let's try something not quite as dark. So that you see, you see how it's um it's picking up the the hand the handle, but it's not picking up that piece of metal there. See how that piece of metal is not being picked up? It's you're not getting the blade. There's a blade right there. So metallic surfaces are a problem. That's common to most of them. So where is something? Uh, it's not a matter of darkness, I don't think. Uh, maybe it is. Wow, okay. Because it does not like this black case. Interesting. Very interesting, Charlie. So it doesn't like black. Let's, well, let's confirm that. Here's something shiny. Okay, it does pick that up a little bit better, but you can see I keep losing it. Okay, so shiny and black are bad. Okay. How's about How's about one of my hooks? Okay, it's got that. The base is black, which is which makes sense now why it's not seeing the base. It's the dots, however, are white. You can see up in the upper left-hand corner, see this color part right here? So it's seeing the dots, but not seeing the base. So it looks like it doesn't see black, and it doesn't see um, shiny. So, for example, this is definitely not dark. But you see it's having a bit of trouble seeing it. That's because it's a reflective surface. When I get the angle right, it gets it. So, shiny metallic surface is bad, black surface is bad. Getting to this button is a real pain in the butt to begin the rotation. You also want to make sure there's not a whole lot of noise in your background for it to pick up. Uh, 
All right, let's try that. There we go. Let's see what happens. So create new marker, no color, and let's hit go. <laughs> it's a racist scatter. Oh my god. Uh That's interesting. You see the little markers appearing every now and then. See the little red dots appearing? I think that's it identifying the markers. Uh, that's a little open there. Hopefully it's going to close that up. There it goes. There's some skewing going on there. I wonder why. See how it's skewing the part? I wonder why it's doing that. Is doing multiple loops a bad idea? It's like it's losing tracking. Let's try a restart. Maybe I'm too close. What's it picking up? It's picking something up right there. Alright, let's try that. Uh, it says, now it doesn't say excellent anymore. There, that says excellent. says 17% why is it losing tracking see how the blue and the green are not in sync together it's like it's losing tracking of where the object is yeah I think I'm going to but I am curious about what it's going to do about this Let's see what it does. Like, will it align the parts? I don't see it. Oh, okay, put it together. No, it is out of sync. You can see how the see how the faces aren't lined up. Like, it had difficulty with that. So let's try the trash bag technique. It probably doesn't help that this is a metallic table.
Okay, let's see what it does. Well, it definitely picked it out better. Oh, it just lost something. You see the way it shifted there? Yeah, see how it's moving? What the heck's going on? First, let's, oh, let's put this back on auto. It's almost like it's not correctly picking up the dots. Because those dots are supposed to prevent that from happening. Okay, that's looking a lot better. And then we're losing it again. It was perfect until it hit that side. Could it be because this is transparent? Let's try this again. This is obviously the perfect scanning subject because it's basically white. It's picking something up over here. So why is it picking this up? It's picking up the black, black bag that's supposed to not let it pick up. Uh, that's possible. Well, I could blast it. It doesn't seem to make a difference. It's still picking up the plastic back here. There we go. It's the black plastic they provided, but that's much cleaner. And I'll blast it with some light. Let's see what happens. Well, it's getting a complete texture. I 
I don't believe that bad at all. Let me turn the light off, see what happens. I wonder, can I move the scanner and get the top of the head? Oh, it, it, it didn't like that. <laughs> it didn't like that one bit. <laughs> okay, don't pick up the scanner. <laughs> it didn't like that one bit. <laughs> It really didn't like that. Now, see, that looks like a pretty good scan, though. And it looks like we got a complete scan, too, except for the little hole on top of his head. Let's save that. That actually looks pretty good. That wasn't a piazzo. That was coming from the computer speakers. So they chose that sound. <laughs> um, you say put the model on its side. Can I... Wait a minute. I can move the model while it's scanning? I could change the position of the model while it's scanning it? Oh, let's try that. So the question is, um, how do I do that? How do I merge two scans together? Yeah, see, it does not like that. It, it, it definitely got pissed off when I tilted the model. So let's do a new one then. Nope, it's still trying to merge. Let's do new. There we go. I don't know what this is. They need to shut the fuck up with that noise. What the hell? Well, it's because it's coming through my speakers. So, of course, the microphone's picking it up. And this one is no alignment, looks okay. No, this one's having alignment issues. No, I expect there to be issues. I don't expect it to be perfect out of the box. That's the software. Because it was warning me it was too far away.
Uh, no, you. it's coming from my speakers, so you physically can't hear it before the speakers go off. Well, that did work. But I want to do it again. Closer this time. Auto. Okay, you can see all the dots. There we go, now centered. saying excellent and it looks much more dense the dot matrix looks more dense well it's probably the um, the sound clipping kicking in so it's not doing it now there's no BB now I turned off the volume good to me yeah it was doing it on my end oh yes <laughs> not anymore I turned it off all right that looks pretty decent so we save that as a So how do we actually fuse them together now? So here's the first one. Now that actually looks halfway decent. That, that actually looks pretty good. But how do I... See, how do I bring both of them in? Oh, wait a minute. Merge. Model 1. Model 2. How do you align them? Oh, it figured it out. Wow. Merge. I'm impressed. Okay. Now, it didn't quite get down here, though. So, I, for whatever reason, it didn't get this little corner edge here. But that's okay. That's not a huge deal. Let's save this. Why the export fail? Oh, because I have it open. Maybe. Or do I have to process? Oh, I gotta make it a mesh and I gotta do all that stuff. They have two programs. They have the Handy Scan program and they have the Handy Studio program. I just converted this to a mesh. Now I do have a hole here. So I gotta close the hole. Alright, that closes the model up. Did a decent job. And now the head is closed. So that merge actually worked. That's pretty cool. Alright, now I can export it. There it is. 
And let's get rid of all the models on the screen here. Let's bring in test two. Uh, this will be interesting because the this bottom surface is not super flat. Oh, good enough. Yeah, see how it's off the table a little bit. There we go. Pretty rough. I mean, that is not smooth. Although, the software has a smoothing option. You just got to be careful, though, because the smoothing obviously removes details. Interesting. Okay, so what else can we scan? I want to scan a nose cone. Let me see if I can find a nose cone. Hang on. This is just a simple nose cone, but it'll still give us an idea of how well this will work. Okay. Okay, let's see what it does with that. losing alignment the 
top isn't perfectly centered. It's processing a little bit. I wonder, will it get that hole if I cut that out of there? Should be able to get closer to. There we go. Hey, it looks like it is getting the hole. Okay. I just moved it closer. See if that'll help. still having difficulty with alignment though it's also not picking up the horn I wonder why it's not getting the horn and it's processing out of alignment why does this keep turning off auto auto Why is that tilted? Okay, that looks a little better. Okay, now that's starting to look a little clean. Okay. I'm still seeing alignment procession. Come on, bring it in. It's kind of getting the shoulder. It's having a tough time with the horn. Let's see what it gets. Yeah, Creality's been working on the scanner for a while. Except it's not pointy. It's it's not it's it the uh, it's like the model is processing out of alignment. Now this is shiny slightly. Well, it's not that shiny. But I'm wondering if I scuff it up a little bit if that'll help. Take away the shine a little bit. Yeah, that's totally screwed up. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Put black dots on the model. See how the green and blue are losing alignment? Yeah, see it's 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 not getting alignment properly. Well, I can't put tracking markers on the nose cone. Um, it's too small. You see how they're not in alignment? It's losing alignment. I wonder. New body. Nope, it's picking up everything, including the black. Isn't that interesting? I put it on body mode and it's picking up the black. Huh. I don't have a sharpie. Where might I find a sharpie? I can put pen marks on it. That kind of works. Why did it look so far away? Isn't that weird? Well, it's only seeing the nose cone. That's the weird thing. It is seeing the nose cone. looks good and it's processing again yeah it's losing it not enough features it's not picking up the marks I put on it either See, I got the little X's on there. Hi. What's the matter, baby? Hey, Michelle. 
These kitties are getting hungry. Yeah, it's, it's losing it. <laughs> okay, what can I do to help that? I've roughed up the surface so it's not shiny. No, it didn't help at all. And uh, to do any more marks, I need a, I need a way of marking it. This isn't working. I need a Sharpie, and I don't have a Sharpie. Oh, that makes me curious. Can I scan my little camera? <coughs> it's not getting the um, little lens. Audio is out of sync again. It says it's too close. That says it's excellent. Hi, baby. How you doing? Yeah. Let me call Michelle since she has not come to feed you. Alright, I gotta go splash her with some water. Not really. <laughs> She's coming, Ender. Let's see if it keeps that in alignment. Maybe it's something to do with the shape. Why is it on manual? I keep changing this to auto and it keeps switching back to manual, which is really annoying. Stop it. What the hell? It just switched. All right, how's that for sync?
That's because I restarted. Switch back to 720. <laughs> hey, that's looking a little bit better. Nope, it's losing it again. I don't get it. Why is it... See, it, it lost alignment again. And now it's trying to merge the two out-of-aligned parts. And why the hell does this keep switching to manual? Oh, these cameras are great. How the hell? Oh. That could be something to do with it. But the head was all white. And this thing, air goes. Yeah, it doesn't like black. No, losing alignment. As soon as we went to the back, it lost alignment. Okay. Uh, feature. Let's try that. Nope, I can already see it's losing alignment. See? It's out of alignment. See, it sees some of these features on the back. Okay, it does not like that. Well, it doesn't get much simpler than this. Now, it's looking down at it. Why isn't it seeing this top surface? Now it's kind of seeing it. Dim the lights? You think it's too bright? Okay, that's looking pretty good, actually. 
That's actually looking really good. Let's try it. Still seeing an alignment issue. Yeah, see how you see this part right here is not in sync? It's losing sync. Is it possible I'm scanning too many frames? Hey! Get down! Watch your mouth, Michelle. See, this looks fantastic. Uh, no, the spin is controlled by the um, thing. See, I'm thinking those red points are it, it picking up markers, and I think it needs to do that. See, I think those red dots are good. I think that's that means it's picking up the registration points. Yeah, see, it, it corrects the alignment when it picks up those dots. And it's gone. Totally gone. It's duplicating. It's duplicating. <laughs> I want to see what that looks like. That's going to look really weird. <laughs> That's what I think, too. I want to see what this looks like. This is going to look weird. Yeah. Actually, I'm surprised it's only two. You can see it's it's getting a clean scan. It's just having an alignment issue when it goes around again. Like this here. I mean, look at that. You can see the hinge right there. And you can't see the name on the front. You can kind of see it. This little clear section is where the name is on the front. This is a uh, pair of headphones. Jabra headphones. They're one of my favorites. Good units. Let's see the manual says. Okay. Infrared projector two infrared sensors RGB sensor oh this is the old scanner you're supposed to be able to hand hold this thing
You saw how pissed off I got when I picked it up. Yeah, it got pissed off when I moved it. You see, look how smooth theirs looks. Theirs look a lot smoother. I know that. How about giving me some setup information? I'm assuming it's my setup. All distracting objects, no irrelevant stuff. I guess we could try it. This is probably charged up enough. So that would go there. Then This would plug into this. I'm surprised that worked. Because that's a big phone. Nope, wrong cable. I thought I had a C to C. Did I drop it? I thought this came with a C to C cable. Let's see the micro. Guess it'll have to work. Only for computer. Let's unplug this. I want to try it out on the phone. Uh, the manual looks pretty good. 
Uh, the uh, blue is not um, out of sync. Blue is already scanned. I can turn this off. Where is the other cable? I saw a C to C cable. Unless I didn't. That is C to micro. I guess we can use that. This connects by Wi-Fi? I didn't know that. Okay, that turned on. I do not see this showing up. And there's no indication that this is turning on. Why the fuck do you keep coming up? What the fuck are you doing? I think I'm pressing a button. Try to go in between. And now I'm pressing the volume button. That's exceptional. Would you go to hell away? I don't think that's working. Is there another cable? Where's all the cables at the schema? This came with a bunch of cables. <clears throat> Did I drop? Oh, yeah, I dropped one. And, of course, my thing's freaking out again. Here we go. Seriously? Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ah, there, turned on. Stop it! God damn it! It's, it, it, that's not the scanner. That's my phone. The buttons are being pressed. Are you telling me it's... Jesus fucking Christ. What's the password for this thing?
Here we go. Uh, let's see if it's this one. Nope. I got a green light, but it is not connecting. Seriously? Yeah, I have the app, but I have to connect to the Wi Fi first. Apparently. <laughs> and it says Wi-Fi is supposed to show up as pop. Oh, wait a minute. I have to set a hotspot on the phone? How the hell do you do that? I wouldn't even know how to do that. Oh, let's change it to USB mode. It looks like it wants me to create a hotspot for the camera. Well, how the hell do you create a hotspot for that? I don't know how to do that. Oh, there we go. No, I don't want to open Bee Bird. I think it saw it, though. Allow handy scan, yes. Okay, that worked. And handy scan crashed. <laughs> Mobile hotspot is for sharing your phone's 4G connection with your laptop using Wi-Fi. But this wants to connect the scanner to the phone. Mobile hotspot's not going to do that. That is not what I wanted you to do. Son of a bitch. Yes. It works. It connected. I saw it on the screen. Then it crashed. <laughs> Let's try a different phone. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's try a different phone. This one, at least, the buttons aren't in the way. Settings. And we're going to use USB mode. Scan. Yes. Oh, 
Okay, connecting by USB does not work. It just keeps crashing. Um, let's try the hotspot, even though I know that's not going to work. Hotspot. Okay, I created the hotspot. Let's see if it connects to it. I might have to turn the scanner off and back on. We are blue. We are green. It is not connecting. And I did create a hotspot called Pop and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I mean, in order for that to work, the scanner has to. The scanner is doing. Oh, you can see that. Oh, interesting. Look at that. You can see the light that it's emitting. Oh, isn't that interesting? Come on. That is absolutely not what I picked. Yes, it is what I picked. It is not connecting. Do I have to hit a button? Device name pop password. <coughs> yeah, I was right about the dual connection. One's for power, one's for communications. Okay, says it has Wi-Fi. It says it has Bluetooth too. I don't see anything that would make me think it's a Bluetooth device. It's not seeing it. No, I'm not seeing nothing on Bluetooth. And the software doesn't have a Bluetooth option. It only says direct or...
Yeah, no Bluetooth. And it's not connecting to the hotspot. I didn't know that was... I knew that these were infrared. I didn't know this was infrared. This is supposed to be a laser. So I guess it's an infrared laser, maybe? I don't know. But I, I knew these were infrared. But those are cameras, not emitters. But now it makes sense. This would be the infrared emitter. Projector! That's what they mean by projector. Okay. So this is projecting the infrared light that these cameras are receiving. Okay, that makes more sense. And then this here is the RGB camera. But yeah, the, your cell phone camera... Actually, I didn't realize the webcams would be that good at it. But your... Um, your cell phone camera, and in this case, your um, this camera, is also good at seeing if your remote controls are working. So if you ever question whether your remote controller is working, um, this one works, but not great. Uh, I scanned the test subject just fine, but I'm not having the greatest luck scanning my own objects. I'm trying to get it to work over the cell phone app, and I'm not having good luck with that. That's what I thought, but the app doesn't even have a Bluetooth option. Wi-Fi or USB. There's no power button. It turns on automatically as soon as you apply power. So there is no... There's a play button. I tried that. Didn't have any effect. Although I still want to try hand-holding it. So in theory, I should be able to do this manually. Let's see what it does. That don't look so great to me. I mean, it's definitely seeing it. But nothing's lining up very well.
Okay. Now, that actually doesn't look too bad. It's only half my hand, but... That's actually not too horrible. I restarted OBS. Now that's interesting, okay. Yeah, you guys just refreshed the page at the same time that I restarted OBS. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. All right, let's try that. I don't expect such a rough handhold to work, but to get some idea. Hey, it's starting to get there. Look at that. Now this has a lot to do with me trying to hold my hand in front of this thing but it did get both sides of my hand that's kind of interesting now what if I were to hand hold the nose cone It's almost there. Oh, that's a smorgasbord. <laughs> wow. That looks like something out of Doctor Strange. So it comes down to alignment. It's an alignment issue. Let's try this again without the silly little thing. Where'd the wacky tack go? Where'd the wacky tack go? It's gone. How could it disappear? No, Michelle. Don't ask what I'm talking about. Hi, cats. Where did the wacky tech go? I just had it. How does that even happen?
Oh, that might work. Why can't I go to automatic? Why is it stuck in manual? Interesting, it's seeing the reflection on the shiny black surface. Well, isn't that weird? I know, but I backed up. It's saying too near, even though I've backed up. Yeah, it's not registering. Oh, there, analysis excellent. Okay. What the hell? Let's see what it does. I don't know why it's doing all that rotation. Woohoo! Doctor Strange again. Uh huh. That looks clean. And it's losing fixation again. Just for the hell of it, let's try some dots. Even though I don't think that's going to work on something this small. Yeah, see, it's just creating a hole. Yes, yeah, now it's saying too far. Uh, did it crash? I don't want you to fuse anything. 
just want you to start over again. Why isn't this going away? There we go. It's a little better, but it's still losing registration. It says excellent. And we still have Dr. Strange. Okay, so those dots aren't working. I wonder if I were to put dots on here. Still, see, it's still losing it. And now it's just merging the cloud. So why can't it maintain a lock on the damn nose cone? And where the hell did that stupid wacky tack shit go? Why don't you make me? That's not going to stand up without something to hold it up. Oh, yes, it will. Okay. See, it loses, it's still losing it. It's scanning my object fine. The problem is, it's losing orientation. Uh, 
texture is not an option. Texture, I have no color or color. But I don't care about texture. Yeah, that's just going to make it white or not. I don't care about that. See, it's rotating out of control. It's losing registration. Are there settings that I can modify? First operation, feature, no color. See, that looks fine. Still looks fine. Uh, it's holding it. No, it just rotated out of control. I didn't want to do that. Now, aren't these markers supposed to keep it in alignment? Isn't that the point of the markers? Yes, I could scan their bust model. It wasn't that great, but it worked. But now that I'm trying to scan a simple white nose cone, it's going crazy. It's, it's losing registration. If I pull back, I get only good. But maybe it'll work better if I catch more of these marks. Auto, then manual. Auto, then manual. Set both auto. I know it's something I'm doing, and I'm just not figuring it out. The problem is it didn't come in instructions. You know what could be doing it. I didn't think of that. Maybe the nose cone is too damn symmetrical. Maybe I need to give it a base. Something to register against. I need that goddamn wacky tack and I don't know where it went. It somehow vanished from the face of the earth. I mean, it's, it's not on the floor. So I didn't drop it. Where the hell did it go? Yeah, I tried putting dots on the object. That made it worse. Where did that stuff go? Yeah, well, it's not working. I mean, this makes me so mad. I just I want to hurt something. You know, let's see if it gets that.
Why is it only saying good? Why won't it go to excellent? Okay, it wants to be closer. And it went back to good. It's like while it's moving, it says excellent. What the hell? Let's see what that does. No, nah, lost it immediately. It didn't like that one bit. Okay, so I need something else. How about a whole shit ton of markers? No. Tell me that works. No way. The hell did it what knocked it over? No, it's losing alignment again. Look at that. It can't even it can't even maintain alignment for that square. Nope. So a whole bunch of marks doesn't work. Please do as you're told. Thank you. That's the closest we've gotten yet, but it's still not even remotely usable. See? We're back to Doctor Strange. Oh, interesting.
Is it not bright enough? How about a whole lot of light? Maybe I need a whole lot more indirect light. So I noticed the um, exposures at a hundred. Well, that's a whole lot more light for you. I did. That's what I've been doing is marker mode. Okay. <coughs> Lost it. There it goes. It's gone. rotating too fast. So it does not like that. Yeah, but if I go back further to get more markers in view, now it just says good. What the hell? lost it. You can tell it's not rotating anymore. It, it, it lost the registration. What else can I scan? It obviously does not like my nose cone. What about something like this?
can seem to get that a lot better. Yeah, seem to get that a whole lot better. Yeah, a whole lot better. So why... Maybe the nose cone is too symmetrical. I wouldn't call it super clean, but it is there. Well, not yet. I mean, it's 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 the kind of thing where you have to have a, a legit need and the skill and means to use it. It could be my environment. It could be what I'm trying to scan. There's a lot of factors here. Come on. Thing is, with a 0.3 millimeter resolution, I would have expected it to be able to get these numbers, these symbols on the remote. I would think it'd be able to pick those up at that resolution. Okay, that's not too bad. No, wait a minute. How do I invert one? There we go. I get it to but how do I get it to recognize that one of these is the top one of these is the bottom I guess there's no way for you to make it do that huh If I click a line, uh, it might be too symmetrical, so it doesn't realize that one's top, one's bottom. Oh, it's starting to get it. 
I guess it's trying different ideas of what it thinks it should be. Nope. That's wrong. It's getting worse. Hmm. You can kind of see the the numbers. Now watch. Why can't I mesh it? Fill holes first. So you can almost see the numbers. There's a two. There's the one. Didn't get the three. And it didn't get the zero. And it didn't get the light symbol either. <coughs> I did, it doesn't work. It's not recognizing that one was the top and one was the bottom. It was trying to make them both tops. Um, how about something different? No, that's got a lot of black on it. We know it doesn't like black. wonder you know I didn't think of that what if I give it something to align with the nose gun what if it just needs something to sit against pop two this is the pop two So what if we were to put something that was asymmetric onto the platform, like this fin, and then place the nose cone on top of the fin, if I can get it to stand up. Okay, so that nose cone now has a fin to align with. But now it won't give me an excellent. It only gives me... And it's not picking up the whole... Oh, there it goes. Okay, it's kind of getting it. Oh. Now, will that fin help it align? Well, that's why I'm hoping it'll include the fin, which I can just chop off later. And I'm hoping the, the giant fin will act as a registration mark. And it lost it again. Why is it losing it? I mean, the fin is very clearly an obvious shape, and it's still losing rotation.
You know, that says excellent. Marker, no color. Switch to manual. I mean, this fin should be a rock solid registration point. And see, it lost it. But why does it scan the, the bust so well? It did a decent job on the bust. See, it's losing it. Maybe some downlight will help. Oh, it is seeing the fin a lot clearer now. See, it loses it. It goes out of control. This isn't a bust. Well, now we could use feature, actually, because we have the fin. We have something for it to use for alignment. It's still losing it. See how you got the shadow that's moving out of alignment? It is better, though. See, now it's losing it again. See how you got the double image? Let's see what it gets from that. It's not going to be good, but then I'm going to hit it with more light. Okay, so it's getting the nose cone, but why? it keeps getting these double images. And there's no way for me to tell it to delete this. Okay, let's try more light. Nope, lost it. See? Rotates out of control. See, we're back to Doctor Strange again. Too much light? Let's kill the light and see what happens. Um, I have... Am I using the wrong software? Is there different software for the Pop 2?
because there is no fast scan and high accuracy scan. Let's try lower light level. Could it be too much light? Nope. It's spinning out of control again. It is definitely better, but it's still spinning out of control. I already did that. And you're repeating yourself. That's definitely better, but it's still got these ghosts from when it lost registration. How is it losing registration with an asymmetrical fin sitting right there? I don't know, what, what kind of, how much more asymmetry does it want? I mean, that's about as asymmetrical as it's going to get. Well, that is a lot better. But it's still not aligning. The problem is I need directions. Does this thing prefer lots of light? Does it prefer overcast light? I mean, what does it want? If it's using its own infrared light, why does it care what the surrounding light looks like? Hey, now that's pretty clean. And it even got the hook. I mean, that's not perfect, but that's the cleanest we've gotten yet. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's a lot cleaner, and it even almost got the hook that time. See, there's the hook right there. You can actually see the shape. You can see the shoulder, even though it's not that clean. Michelle! What? The cats are hungry. I know, I'm coming. This poor kitty is really hungry. Okay, that's the cleanest one we've gotten yet. So, like I suspected, the issue is registration. Now, the issue is keeping it aligned. How do I clip this? You already got it? Oh, wait a minute. Can I do it here? Hi, 
You know, that's the opposite of what I want. Oh, okay. So I go from this side. And I keep whatever's on that side. There we go. Okay, I see what it's doing. I see what it's doing. Come on. So let's clip this much. There we go. Complete the clip. Let's fill holes. Okay, all the holes are filled. That is actually almost a nose cone. It's a little crude, but it is a nose cone. I, I know a lot of this comes down to technique and learning how to work with the the system. I know a lot of this is that. It's not as simple as, you know, it doesn't work. You gotta work with it. Um, but now how do I go to high accuracy mode? Because that's not, that's not high res. Like, I couldn't really use that nose cone. So how do I get that 0.1 millimeter accuracy? You can see how the surface is not exactly super smooth. Right. Yes. I'm back to doing the wheezing again. Why is hmm. it? I don't know, Michelle. You're a weirdo. It takes one to know one. Now those look like holes still. Let's see what they look like in here. Nice platform. That's so platform. There it is. Uh, edit. Uh, Please surface. Yeah, see, it's not very clean. I mean, it's there. The basic shape is there. Now, is there a way to go into a higher resolution mode? I don't see an option anywhere to change settings. So the two fins definitely helped with the registration issue. I was wondering why it's not getting this part of the fin, and I realized that is in the shadow of the model as the light hits it. So that actually makes sense. got rid of the background noise so you can already see there's a little bit of a misalignment and that's why the nose cone doesn't end up pointy because there's a slight misalignment
see it's out of alignment again. Maybe I'm, no, see, I'm not, I'm not even doing one rotation. So let's do exactly one rotation. And we are 90 degrees. See, we're all, we haven't even gone 360 degrees and we're out of alignment already. That's a single rotation, 360 degrees. See, that does not look that bad. It looks almost the same as the other one. But you see how the nose cone isn't pointy? And I think that's because of the slight shift. Well, yeah, like here you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 markers. But you know how you were saying red dots? I'm not seeing red dots. But I'm not doing marker mode. Let's go marker mode. There's still oscillation in the dot cloud that's lowering the resolution. See how they don't quite line up here? This section right here shouldn't even be there. So you're saying place markers on the fins? We can do that. Since I'm just going to remove those. Okay. Oh, they want it 45 degrees. This is not 45 degrees. We can do that too. And now we're only getting a good. There's an excellent. Switch to manual to stop the oscillations. And now we're getting red dots. Ah. Ah, <coughs> uh, yeah, the IR gain is all the way down. Look at that. We're getting red dots now. It's seeing the registration marks.
Okay, that's looking a lot better. I'm still seeing a slight misalignment, though. And it's picking up some registration dots that aren't there. See, these three dots aren't here. All right, that is a little better. Forgot to trust scanning you. I think that's the cleanest one yet, though. Let's download that. I'm probably getting. Hmm, it's not that much better. Although the horn is complete. Alright, come on, baby. Audio's out of sync again. Come on, Katie. It's still not great, though. This is supposed to have 0.1 millimeter accuracy. I'm not seeing that. So I'm thinking I'm doing something wrong. I mean, as we change things, it does get better. Let's try making this more centered. So that would be more like that. And this would want to be more in the center. No, Michelle. Make a breakfast. Don't eat a can of fruit. Why can I eat a can of fruit? Because it's not what normal people do. You left the creamer out again. And it won't give me an excellent now.
Okay, got an excellent out of it. We are pretty close to centered. The nose cone is not processing too much. Let's fix the gate. Both are set to manual. It's not seeing all the dots though. Why is it having trouble seeing that the dots? That was my finger. What? He clawed my hand when I was grabbing the bolt. It made me drop him. And push him away next time. And it was your cat too. Come on, play nice with me. Um, I'm already looking down on the nose cone. I'm, I'm at about a 45 degree angle right now. And again, alignment issues. <sighs> what have you done to get it to work better, Ronald? I know it's something I'm doing. I know the hardware is capable of it. And it's something that I'm doing that's not working right. Yeah, see, it's um, it's not aligned. I still can't believe there is no freaking manual. I tried. That didn't help. I have little X's drawn on the cone. It doesn't even see them. Well, that's why I added an asymmetric base. So you can see here. I should have had you guys seeing this part here. As you can see, I added... I added a fin to the base to make it dramatically asymmetric and that did help a lot but I'm still having minor alignment issues that mean I get nowhere near 0.1 millimeter resolution I'm getting like 5 millimeter resolution
eat candy that you got? The best one out of is the buttered popcorn and the uh, cotton candy. You hear me? I'm getting ready to head back to my room. So what are you doing, Ronald, to get by this can? Do you know where Sharpie is, Michelle? No. You did have a bunch of them. I know I have a bunch of them, but I have no idea where any of them are. I can't find a single freaking Sharpie. I don't even know where my marker container is that you got me. That I had them in them. They're in one of my containers, and I don't know which one. You know what I mean? Don't you hate that with me? need something you can't find it but then when you don't need it you no i can't it. take it outside because the um the android app doesn't work it actually it actually does connect to the scammer and i see the image from the scanner and then it crashes the app immediately i tried two different phones This is the best I've gotten so far. I mean, for five years ago, this would have been impressive. But right now, this is not impressive. So what else can I do to improve alignment? It seems to prefer less light than more light. When I add more light, it seems to make it worse. Although I haven't added light since I put the fins on the bottom. We can try it with a little more light. See, it's losing alignment. That's the problem. I'm losing alignment. And when you when you when you put together multiple frames that are not aligned, so it clearly does not like the light. You see, much better with less light. Good. Let's go back to feature again. Because the fin is a feature. See if I get better results. It's losing alignment. See how the blue is shifting away from the green? And that's going to result in a reduction of resolution.
See, the, I think this is the reason why I'm not getting... There we go. Everything should be re-synced again. So I think this is why I'm not getting... You know, that's an interesting thing. Let's test something. I want to try something. I just reset OBS, so it should be back to normal now. Fill holes. That's actually the smoothest one yet. I don't know. I haven't got the mobile app to work yet. Also, I wonder why it doesn't have the Z-axis right. So why is this model tilted? I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it's still annoying. Okay, how big are you? Well, it's, it's, it's pretty close dimensionally. It says 25.18 millimeters, and that's about what that nose cone is. So it, it, it's dimensionally accurate. The surface is just not clean. I wanted to see if it was like if it was making the bottle bigger. It's not. It, it, the bottle's the right size. I'm trying to. Draw wiggly lines across it. I'd love to if I could find something that would actually draw on it. Yeah, this is not working. I don't have anything that will draw on it. What about coloring pencils? That might actually work. Do I have any goddamn pencils anywhere nearby? Green. I know I need a Sharpie. I ain't got a Sharpie. <laughs> I know a Sharpie would be ideal. <sighs> Seeing if I have a Sharpie hiding somewhere. Wait, what about my drawer right here? Seriously? I 
I have a red Sharpie. Why do I have the feeling red's not going to work? <laughs> Why do I have that feeling? So, kind of like that. And why the fuck isn't that visible? Kind of like that. You son of a bitch, come on. Okay. How do I get it to see the, the squiggle lines? So what mode do I put it in so that it sees those lines? Because it's certainly not seeing the lines on the preview. Or will that just happen in the background? I mean, how come something is absolutely prominent as this delta wing not work as a registration <laughs> texture scan actually that's nope it's going out of alignment again it had it for a while there and then it lost it Start. So, scan color or no color? It's still, it's out of alignment again. Unless that's just the actively scanned area. Let's see what that does. Working a little harder. Still not getting a point, but that's okay. I see I still have a ghost. Let's see if I can get rid of that ghost. How do I get rid of the ghost? That looks pretty clean. Don't drift. 
Come on, don't drift. And that's 360. I didn't see as much drift that time. I turned up the gain a little bit. Hey, I don't see no mismatch shadows. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I read that, that I need to click auto and then go back to manual. Hey, that's not that bad. I don't see any um, out of alignment shadow either. That actually looks almost intact. Let's get rid of our little base here. Complete. Fill holes. Let's do planar surface. Well, we won't know until we actually open this in a slicer. Remember, texture can falsely make things look a lot nicer than they really are. Because your brain uses the texture to fill in the holes. But as you can see, it's not a whole lot better, but it is cleaner. And it's still not aligning according to the axes correctly. And now our dimensions are completely wrong. This should be 25 millimeters and it's not. Do I have extra pieces here? Oh, I do. So, nose three is what I have. So, I need to get rid of everything except nose three. You asshole, that's not what I want you to do. That's correct. 25 millimeters. Okay, so the dimensions are still accurate. Uh, can I clean this up a little bit? Smooth it? See, the, the, the texture is hiding the imperfections. The problem is it doesn't hide them when you print it. <laughs> This is supposed to be 0.1 millimeter accurate. That does not seem like it to me.
that's pretty close and I'm getting a lot of errant garbage so three is still what I want get rid of the errant garbage and it is 25 millimeters so it's the right size I don't know I mean this is I mean it is a scan and it is dimensionally accurate but I mean look how look how smooth and and barely there the shoulder is I mean this I expected to have trouble getting I kind of expect that but it's just the the, the point is not there the surface finish is absolutely horrendous I mean I just don't find that to be very impressive I mean, I guess if you want to scan your car and use it in a game, maybe that would work. But to copy this nose cone? Eh. Not that impressed. And then especially, not being able to scan anything that's black? I mean, every goddamn thing on the planet has black in it. I mean, with the exception of a nose cone or a stupid little statue, show me one thing that doesn't have black in it. I mean, my blue camera has black in it. You know, the, the, this battery pack has black in it. You know, everything has black in it. The, the remote has black in it. Everything has black in it. You can't just ignore black. And you also can't just spray paint everything you want to scan. Well, am I supposed to spray paint my camcorder? No, that's not going to work. <laughs> because I could see it being useful, for example, if I could scan this, then I could um, make a case for it. I can make a custom enclosure for this instead of having to build one from scratch. I could scan this and use it as a cut tool, but that's black and that's black, so it doesn't scan it. Now this surface is no big deal, that'll just fill as a hole, but I need this shape because that's a three-dimensional object that has to be accounted for. Now is that removable? It probably is, but that's still black. <laughs> I don't know if this is even capable of it, but where this could be interesting is um, 3D scenery. So, like, imagine taking a portrait of people, and instead of taking a picture, I walk around them with this. And um, if there was a way to import higher resolution textures on top of that, you could create a three-dimensional copy of a seed, kind of like a holodeck. But I could also do that with photogrammetry. <laughs> um, I, it's not it's not the point of the cost. It's the point of I'm not spraying shit on my cameras. <laughs> I'm just not going to do that. You know, if you want me to spray something on the nose cone, great. I'll do that all day long. I don't care. But um, it clearly doesn't have a problem capturing the shape of the nose cone. It's just not capturing any detail. It's like no detail at all. I mean, look at look at the resolution of this cone. It's 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 horrible. And that's the best one we've gotten yet. Uh, the audio seems to be all screwed up, and I don't know why the hell it's screwed up. I need to get a USB microphone and stop using the um, mics built into the cameras and see if that helps. But the only USB mic I have died. <laughs> or just a plug-in mic. I do have a mic import on this thing. No, no, I wish there was a way to make it cleaner.
what do I have to say? You just... I mean, I guess if I were to print this, I wouldn't notice most of those details. Except that shoulder. That shoulder is pretty nasty. I wish the shoulder was a little cleaner, a little crisper. Foot job Bob. If I can ever get the scanner working, maybe I can send you a 3D scan of a foot. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I... I mean, that's about as good as a bottle. Oh... How's that for audio sync? Um, scanning spray vanishes in a few hours. I don't care. It's still there. Maybe the color's gone, but whatever it's sprayed on the surface is still going to be there, and it's going to get into all the mechanisms of an optical machine. Again, you know, spraying a nose cone, no big deal. Spraying my camera, no. You know, that thing's what 250 bucks and why doesn't it get the point you know why doesn't it scan the point is I mean that's not oscillation if that was oscillation then the unless the lack of overlap in the point cloud data causes it to delete it that's a good question how tall is this 92 millimeters I took off about a millimeter maybe two so that's what 93 94 95 millimeters where is my calipers how long is the nose cone maybe we're just losing it to point cloud deviation does this not work anymore did it already kill the batteries seriously Well, I can use the built-in scale. It'll be close enough. Uh, yeah, we're losing height. This is... It's about 96 millimeters long. So that could be where the loss is. If it's deciding that the point cloud data there at the tip is invalid and it's deleting it, um, that would account for the missing two millimeters. Because if I chop two millimeters off the top of this nose cone, it's gonna be a blunt tip like that. You can't have an accuracy of 0.1 millimeters with a resolution less than 0.1 millimeters. Your resolution has to be equal to your accuracy. Um, that's not what I think is happening. What I, okay. Um, it's creating a point cloud of the surface of this model. Now, if I create a point here and then move it one millimeter and create another point, it's still going to be on the surface of the model. So that is going to be, that deviation is why you have this molting on the surface of the model. Okay? So why is the tip gone? Well, it's, the model is actually shorter than it should be. That explains a lot. So, if I create a point cloud where I, cr I get that little tip, but then that tip moves and I get the tip again, and then that tip moves and I get the tip again, the software is going to assume that the fact that those point clouds don't line up means it's errant data. Like when I scan here, you can see, like you can see, 
See how some of these points are outside of the model? See how some of those points are, are not there? They're, they're outside of the frame of the model. So I'm thinking the, um, the algorithm that determines what points to keep and what points to get rid of is deciding. See how the point cloud is very low density up here at the top? And that, that might just be because that's that's too small for the infrared camera to capture. I don't know, but it's it's not catching enough points of that tip to draw it. And so when you mesh it together, it's just closing the top. Um, because it, it is dimensionally accurate. The, the It's 25 millimeters, and it's coming up 25 millimeters. Um, but the length is a little bit short. And that would make sense if there was just not enough points there at the tip and it was just it was going away because there was not enough points there I wonder if I were to draw the tip would that make it more obvious to it That might help a little bit no I didn't draw up to the tip but that's what I did now I I colored the tip red let's see if that helps at all Now we got that tip showing up there. Hmm. Still not getting the tip. Hello, Keyman. And we have a misalignment again. No, well, that's not a misalignment. That's just where it's scanning. It's still not getting the tip. That's not a huge deal. Uh, that's really not a big deal. What I would like is for it to be a bit smoother. I would like a little more crispness in that edge there. Yeah, see, it's not getting the tip at all. It's just not getting it. See? It just never gets there. Yeah, but how do I switch modes? I don't see a way of switching modes. <laughs> Dirty dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, the, the tip is just not there.
Hey, Maker Viking. Yeah, see, tip is. Looks like HK Why the fuck would you do that? Looks like about 450 bucks. 450, 460 dollars. So almost 500 bucks. You see, they're only showing. So if I were to scan a 3D textured model, this would probably come out just fine. If that's all you wanted, but I want quite a bit more than a 3D textured model. Seriously? Uh, so let's find something with a texture that this thing's actually capable of scanning. What the hell? Let's try this. Will this even scan it? There we go. Well, everything has black in it. <laughs> Find me something that doesn't have black in it. Now, can I move this? Because if I can change the angle. Now, the last time I moved it, it didn't like it. That's actually normal. Okay, now, except for the, obviously, the parts that are black, let's export this.
Actually, that's not even that good. Well, it doesn't help that it's shiny, too. It's black and it's shiny metallic. There you go. Um, it's a shiny metallic surface. So, do I have anything that's not black and not metallic? Yeah, that would help too. Oh, here we go. Not black and not metallic. Now, how come when I put it on auto, it comes out good, but when I go manual, it darkens up? Probably won't matter. I'm going to let it go around once, like this, and then I'm going to hit it with some light. Yeah. Now let's get some light inside there. Let's get some light over here. Okay. I think we got a pretty decent amount of data. There's an alignment issue, but it's not too bad. Okay. All right, and that's a pretty dense cloud. Still didn't quite close that up, but that'll happen later. Okay. Let's save that. Nothing beeped at me.
mesh it up. I may have given it too much light. I may have messed up the texture. How many scans? Oh, a dozen. Yeah, I messed up the um, the texture with the flashlight because that's actually pretty good. Let's see if we can fix the texture. So let us adjust it with the light on it. That's better. Now I go to manual and it gets rid of, that's what's happening. I go to auto, it's adjusting. And when I go to manual, it doesn't do the adjustment. So I have to just do it manually. Let's try that. I think it's still too bright. Oh, you you can't you don't you have very little granular adjustment. Let's try that. I could pull back to darken it up a little bit. Now that right there looks pretty good. Much better. I can actually read it this time. Yeah, I can actually read it this time. Okay. Let's try that. Yeah, you can almost read it. Let's see what happens when I mesh it. Yeah, you can read it now. Much better. BT Lux. And then we fill the holes.
There, now it's a solid mesh. See, that don't look so bad. But that's because we are, um, your brain is making, your brain is smoothing and correcting because it sees a color mesh. To show you what I mean by that, See how the surface is not that smooth? It's interesting that it, 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 it almost, it picked out the inverse of the logo. That's kind of interesting. So as you can see now, I mean, zoom back like this, sure, it looks like a, a pot holder. But as soon as you zoom in, the surface finish is just not that good. I don't know. So if, if you want this 3D model to put on your website, that's great. But to reproduce it, not so great. I mean, this looks pretty cool. I like this. It's just not that useful. Like even the texture is relatively low resolution. That zoom level right there is about right for that texture. I could smooth it a little bit. That might actually help. See if that looks any better. Here's an interesting challenge. Can I do a off access scan and will it even work if I can make it stand up? No, I can't make it stand up. I mean, I could do that, but you're not going to get much from that. Although it would complete the texture. But this thing doesn't seem to like me flipping models over. It doesn't seem to like that very much. I'll wait till I'm done processing this to fix the audio. It, it almost
almost a line. Nope. See, it, it doesn't seem to realize that this needs to be flipped over. So it's not. Yeah, it's not going to work. I think 180 degrees is not going to work. I think you need to go. Um, the same surface needs to be visible in both scans. So I think what I would need is to scan this sideways. But there's no way to make this stand up sideways. Wait a minute, will that stand up? No. And I can't add anything to it. I could try cheating. Oh, hot glue. But this might be heavy enough not to stay over. Glad I got this giant battery. <laughs> Come on, heat up. You'd think with a battery that big, this would heat up faster. Come on. It's getting hot. Although these are high temp glue sticks. So it might just take longer. Fire? What fire? Why is it taking so long? It's got plenty of power. Hey, it's starting to get soft. 
Finally! We're going to leave that on in case I need it again. Now this needs to be adjusted. There we go. Yeah, I messed it up. I know, but I only care about the bottom side. That one did not work so well, but it might work well enough, we'll see. I don't think so though, I think something's wrong with that one. Yeah, it's no good. Let's try changing the angle since it seems to like a downward angle better. It did not like that angle so much. Yuck. 
Don't like that at all. So why doesn't it like this? Why is it coming out so dark? Now it's better. Why is it growing? Five hundred bucks for a three D scanner is very cheap. It's just a matter of what are your expectations. Okay, that actually came out good. That actually came out really good. It's just too dark. And that's because this goddamn thing changed on me again. Even though I keep switching it, and it keeps switching back on its own. There we go. Much better. Much better. Okay. That looks pretty good, actually.
Now let's try aligning. There we go. Very nice. Merge. So it wants 90 degrees off axis. It does not like 180 degrees off axis but 90 degrees off axis it likes that there we go now we have a proper model the one model is a little too dark and I, I lost some of the wording because of what I did but not bad and go back to process. Turn into a mesh. Okay. I'll reboot OBS once this is done. Ooh, that ain't bad at all. And now we have almost everything. And let's fill the holes. There we go. Now that actually doesn't look that bad. You can even almost read it, BT Lux. We got most of the inside even. There's even some texture on the inside there. Look at that. Not bad. You can even make out the stitching. Might not be the best for 3D printing, but it's definitely not that bad for 3D modeling. Now, can I save this? Now, I'm guessing if I say if I save it as an OBJ, that should retain the textures, right? Alrighty, there we go. Um, I'm going to make all three of these files available. Let us put those files there for you guys to play with. One, two, three. So there's three different files, STL, OBJ, and PLY. So you guys can play with these if you want. Those files are now on my printer profiles folder. 
it is currently uploading them. That's pretty cool though. You know, for a, like a 3D model for a website or something like that, that'd be pretty slick. Well, that's it. Um, that thing's pretty cool. Uh, I think my expectations were a little higher than its capabilities. I don't think it's going to be all that useful for making duplications of nose cones. Where it might come in handy is as a, a model for someone to build something in Fusion around. Like there's a way to import a model like this into Fusion and then for you to build around it. Um, it might be handy for that to allow someone to recreate um, the details of a code, but it's not going to actually create a scan smooth enough for you to go, nose code, scan, print. Um, well, even the areas where it's marked, it's just not that smooth. It's in, like, for example, the, um, the resolution's just not there to capture that shoulder. That shoulder right there is a nice crisp edge, but when I um, scan it, it comes out as a, a as it comes out as like a fillet. So the the resolution is not there to get that. Yeah, back to uh, that. Well, the, I don't, obviously I don't need this for this kind of a nose cone because this is I can create this in Tinkercad. Yeah, for something like that, possibly. Um, I wonder. There's something else I want to try real quick. So, this might be interesting for doing something like this. Okay, too, too close. Oh, I don't want to do that. So it might be good for doing something like this. Oh, I lost the alignment. Got it back. Huh, it's not picking up my face. Oh, there it goes. It does not like that. Now, why is it having so much trouble picking up my face? 
Oh, there it goes. Now, if I were to actually set up like a hula hoop on a bearing and have it actually rotate around me, it'd probably work even better. What the hell? That actually worked! <laughs> that looks very creepy. <laughs> that actually worked! We're going to name that one Creepy. <laughs> That was way cooler than I thought it was going to be. That's not going to look good. <laughs> That's not going to look good at all. The color texture is what makes it look like something. Did a halfway decent job of filling it in, too. You know where this will come in handy? 
scaling helmets and armor to fit your body because it's dimensionally accurate at least more than accurate enough Ooh, no more guessing at helmet sizes I could just import the STL of my head and see if the damn helmet will actually fit <laughs> now, of course, I could smooth that out. There we go. That's actually pretty, that's actually pretty cool. But do a if I could if I could a little bit better lighting, um, do a little more stable rotation around my head, and that would be enough to allow you to fit things. Because that's the actual size of my head within a millimeter or two. That's actually kind of cool. Well, I'm going to leave you guys with that ultra creepy image right there. And if anybody just, you know, just because I know somebody will scream at me if I don't. So there's an OBJ file if you just want to fuck around with it. Lizard Neris. There you go. Now you creeps can creep around with my creepy 3D model. <laughs> that's that's actually significantly better than I thought it would be. I did not think that would come out that well. Mm, that's cool. And I can and there's things I can do to that too. So for example just just a couple of smooth routines would probably have a pretty big impact. I wish I could define bottom. I hate the fact that I have to keep rotating it. And let's do one more smooth. Let's do an STL this time. Uh, I don't think the computer could handle a full body scan of something my size. You underestimate just how fat I am. Come on! I clicked the damn file. Stop messing with me. Now that is a little bit smoother, actually. I think I actually prefer it unsmoothed. Because now I look kind of melty. <laughs> I'm not to play with that. Make a skin mask of my own face. <sighs> All right, guys. I will see you next week. I'm going to continue playing with this because now I'm actually kind of fascinated. Uh, I was originally disappointed because I wanted to duplicate these things. But now that I'm playing with it, scanning real-life objects with textures, now I'm actually kind of excited. This is 
this is actually kind of neat. So I'm going to play with this some more. All right. Um, now, do not forget, I don't make any money if you use the Kickstarter link. There's no affiliate there. There's no commission. Do remember, it is a Kickstarter. And there's always risk. This, however, is Revo Point. They've already released one before. You're 99.9% .9 certain to get it if you decide to back it. But it is a Kickstarter. Always keep that in mind. Um, and as long as you go in eyes open, you're fine. But, um, yeah, I'm impressed. And thank you, Ronald, for the help. And the other guy, too. Um, who was the other person who was um, giving me all that help? Um, Brother John and Fragger. So thank you very much. And, um, yeah, I'm going to play with this. Yeah, I can, I can think of all kinds of freaky shit I can do with this. Like, get a chest bust and then have the alien popping out of it, and I can 3D print myself as an alien chest burster. <laughs> or, or a full head thing and have a ghoul going into the back of my neck or something like that. Yeah. 